Welcome back everybody. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to figure out how much your sports cards are worth and stick around to the very end. I'm gonna be showing you how you can save money when you're selling your cards. Let's go. Welcome back to another video, everybody. So you wanna know how much your sports cards are worth? Super simple, let's get straight to it. We're gonna jump into the computer right here. Let me just share my screen. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna to go to eBay. Now let's say you have a card that looks something like this. And so you type in Ken Griffey Jr., you find the one, Don Russ right here, and you're like, holy $20,000, I'm loaded! No, no, no. Okay, so we click on this. And this is where a lot of people get confused. They just search on eBay, they type in their card, and they're like, holy cow, my card is worth $20,000. And that's not the case at all. I could list this card right here for $500 million. That doesn't mean it's worth it. It's only worth what someone's willing to pay for it. So you gotta keep that in mind. But you guys are smart, you already knew that. So say you have this card in hand right here. The first thing you wanna do when you're trying to find a comp for your card is you gotta find the year of the card. So right here, it's right on front, 1990. And then you gotta find the manufacturer of that card. Donruss, Prism, Optic, Topps Chrome, any of that. So we would type in 1990, Don Russ, Ken Griffey Jr. And then we'd go to the back and we'd find the card number, which is gonna be this right here, 365. So 1990, Don Russ, Ken Griffey Jr., 365. That's what we're gonna type in right here. And lo and behold, we can get this card for cheaper than $20,000. But this is still not how much it's worth. What we have to go here is you gotta go to the side here. Right there. So show only sold and completed items. This is what somebody has paid for the item. Therefore, this is how much the card is worth. Oh, it's not looking good. It's not $20,000. It's not $900. Uh, March 6th, someone paid $5 free shipping. March 6th, $6, and they got two of them. $1 plus shipping, $3.95 plus shipping, so you can see this card is not worth very much at all. It's a little discouraging when you see that $20,000 and then you realize, oh shoot, it's actually not worth that much at all. And part of this is because this card was created in what we consider the junk wax era. And the junk wax era was just when they produced a ton of cards. And that was between the late 80s to the early 90s. So anything in between there, unless the card is in pristine condition, that's the number one thing that's gonna hold value in a card that was produced then is the condition of the card. So the other thing that you could do is say you have a card and it's just in perfect condition. You could go and send that thing off to grading and it would be worth a lot more. So let's see if this card were graded by say PSA, BGS, SGC, what would that be worth? And so these cards will still hold value if they are in pristine condition. So right here at the very top, we have a PSA 8, which is not a bad grade, but it's only $18. And you factor in the cost of grading the card, it's just not worth it. And the reason is there's millions of this specific Ken Griffey Jr. card. So a PSA 8, a lot of people have a PSA 8, I guess. So say we go to a Ken Griffey Jr in a 10. So this is a perfect card right here. And this one right here, that's a not so good grading company. So we're going to disregard that. Right here, 355 or 350. And this was auction 42 bids. This one PSA 10, somewhere in the ballpark of 137 and 350. All right, let's do another one. Let's look at this Kevin Durant rookie card. And so what we're also going to factor in when we're trying to find a value of this is the condition of this specific card. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So we're going to take this card, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to search the year, the make, the player, and the card number right here. Okay. 
So right here, I'm gonna flip it to the back. This is Kevin Durant rookie card, so that is 2007. This is a Topps Kevin Durant. And this is card number 112. Now he has a couple different versions of this. He has the black border, the orange border, and the white border are gonna be the most popular ones. And so I'm also going to, going to add into this at the top. I'm just gonna type in orange because mine is the orange border. All right, so now we have, these are some sold comps right here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to look at my card specifically, and I'm going to compare it based on the grading values that PSA or Beckett holds. And the things that they're gonna look for, they're going to look at the corners, the edges, the surface, and the centering. So there's four things that they are looking at right there. So when you're really inspecting your cards, I suggest just carefully taking them out of their holders. You can keep them in the soft sleeve, but if you have scratches on a top hold, uh, on a top loader, then it's gonna look like there's scratches on the card, so just take it out, be careful. All right, so we're gonna hop into my phone right here. And so with this one, you can see there's a little whitening on this corner. We go to this corner, a little whitening up there as well. Down there, corner looks better than the first two. And down there, we got a little whitening on that corner as well. Take a look at the centering. The centering looks pretty dang good right there. Wouldn't say there's any issues. And I've inspected this card as well. And I personally didn't see any, uh, I didn't see any surface issues. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the back here. And this is where these specific cards get really tricky because of the black border. So this black border, you're gonna see a lot of white chipping because it's a white card stock underneath. So you can see that corner doesn't look so good. And then along the top here, you know, that's not a nice crisp line. All those scratches right there are on the mag holder that I have it in. That corner, not so hot. That corner, definitely not so hot. And that corner, not so good. So the back is really hard to nail, which means a PSA 10 of this card, this Kevin Durant rookie card, 112, holds a lot of value because there's a big difference between a PSA 7, 8, 9, and then the 10 because they're just so susceptible to chipping. Okay, so we're gonna look at this one right here. Come down here. All right, so we've got a soft corner right there in the top left. Top right doesn't look very good. You see a little bit of chipping along the side here, along the edge. And then it looks like there's a scratch there kind of leading out of his elbow. Bottom right corner, not so hot. And bottom left corner, definitely not hot. And this was Probstein, so they only have one picture. I would say our card looks better than that, but I would put it in that ballpark, maybe on the low end, 122, and then somewhere in the ballpark of 150, I would say. So if you're looking to move it pretty quickly, price on the lower, you go 120, 110, or you could, if you don't mind sitting on it for a little bit, price it a little bit higher, 150 to 180 in there. All right, now let's say you wanna find the, let's say you wanna find the value of a graded card like this. This is a RJ Barrett 2019 Select Rookie Card. So this is super easy to find the value. All you do is you type this in right there. So they lay it out for you. They put the year, the make, manufacturer, and then the player, and then you have the card number right there. So we go 2019, Panini, select. On these select cards, you have concourse, premier, and courtside for basketball. So on the back, you just have to look to see which one it is. It'll say right there, it says premier level, concourse, I believe will say right here, depending on the card. So we'll type in premier, RJ Barrett, 157, and we'll search that. 
First thing it's going to do is give us a bunch of raw cards. So once again, we are going to go down. We want to find the value. So we're going to go down to solds all the way here at the bottom. If you are on your phone, all you have to do is just swipe to the side. So raw just sold for 20 bucks, 25 bucks. And we want to go to graded, which is right here. So we're going to go PSA. And this is a 10, so we're going to click on 10. And so this one right here, this is a silver. Mine is not a silver. This is just a base that I have here. So we'd be looking at 169 with $4 shipping. What I like to do here is select this. So based on how quickly I'm trying to move it, if I want to move it quickly, I'm going to go to market value, which is ended recently. So these are the most recent sales. And you'll get that a lot with a player, say RJ Barrett. RJ Barrett at the beginning of the season came out super hot, had a good couple of games. His prices skyrocketed. Since then, he's not played so good. They got Derrick Rose. He's just not doing so hot and the Knicks don't get a lot of coverage. That's my my grope right there, okay? Just just let me be. I like RJ Barrett, all right? Don't judge me. He's a good player. All right? No, I'm just kidding. This one right here, that means someone took a best offer. What a best offer means is you have a listing with this thing called best offer. I click that, I send you an offer below 189 and you accepted it. So I could have sent you an offer for 188 and you accepted it, or I could have sent you an offer for 34 cents and you accepted it. There's other ways to figure out what that was, but we're not gonna get into it. So 173, so I would guess around there. One, you know, if I had this card, if I wanted to list it right now, I would put it around the 170s. So if we wanted to see the highest price of this sold, keep in mind there's gonna be a lot of silvers here. So what we can do at the top, we can go minus silver and oh, spell silver, right? And that'll take out all the silvers. And so the highest one right here, 173 and $9.99 shipping. And that sold January 31st right there. Now I'm gonna give you a little bonus tip on the best way to sell a card. So if you sell a card on eBay, you gotta factor in that you're gonna pay 13% just in fees. Cause eBay is gonna take about 10% using their platform and their website, which is fine. They put millions of people in front of your cards. And then PayPal or the eBay pay is gonna take about 3% from that. So you're gonna factor in that if you sell a $100 card, you're only gonna get about $87. Then you have to factor in, are you gonna pay shipping or is the buyer gonna pay shipping? Now, a really good way that I like to sell my cards is through Facebook groups and Instagram because then you are not gonna pay that 10% eBay fee right there. It's just strictly the 3% PayPal fee. So you're putting, you know, if that's a $100 card, you're putting an extra $10 in your pocket. And then that gives you more money to invest in your sports cards. If you wanna see more videos like this one, please consider subscribing. We're building a community over here and I have a goal of getting to 2,000 subscribers by the end of the year. Amazon links in the description below. Until the next video, stay safe, get some good cards, and I'm out. It's so